morning and welcome. Morning. Good morning. It is a pleasure to see you here this morning. I'm liking that temperatures are warming up in comparison to yesterday. <laughs> uh, a handful of announcements. A reminder that food bank donations are being collected today. So if you want to collect the, or if you want to donate to that, you can mark your envelope and put it in the back uh, offering plate. A reminder, there is a board meeting after service today. Um, if you have not yet had a chance to sign up for Easter flowers, that sheet is on the back table. And the Easter party sign-up sheet is in the back if you have not had an opportunity to sign up for those. If you have signed up and you have not yet brought your donation items in, they need to be into the church by Friday morning. Also, our baby bottles would be returned by next Sunday. When you return them, please mark the little returned R next to your name so that we know that they have been brought back. And as always, if you would collect your pop tabs and your aluminum cans. Are there any other announcements? This morning you'll see we are doing our service a little bit differently. Uh, this is Palm Sunday, but for those who may not participate a lot in the Holy Week uh, services, whether that be Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, or Holy Saturday, it's, it misses something in the journey of the Holy Week if you go from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday, straight from victory to victory. If there's nothing about Jesus' story of suffering in the middle, you kind of miss the fullness of what goes on during Holy Week. And so we will be taking a journey from Palm Sunday all the way through the Passion as we participate in today's service. As such, this means the service is going to be a little bit different. It's also going to be a little bit more meditative, and it's going to be heavily focused on Scripture, similar to like a um, Christmas Eve lessons and Scriptures type, um, or lessons and hymns type setup. Um, also, that means that we know we have a board meeting afterward, but if you could depart out of the building, those of you that are leaving and those of you who are staying, just maintain a sense of silence for a while after the service, just to kind of separate the, the busyness that we usually do after church um, from this much more holy moment as we prepare for the, the Passion Week portion of Holy Week. So let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the prelude and process with the light correct. <laughs> Began rejoicing 
They praised God with a loud voice because of all the mighty things they had seen. They said, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Some of the Pharisees from the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, scold your disciples. Tell them to stop. He answered, I tell you, if they were silent, the stones would shout. Now we respond, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us continue worshiping he who comes in the name of the Lord by joining in singing number 208, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. And you may wave your palms if you desire. Almighty God, on this day your Son, Jesus Christ, entered the holy city of Jerusalem and was proclaimed King by those who spread their garments and palm branches along his way. Let them, branches, be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our Lord and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. In his name we pray. Amen. As we recognize and honor the offering that has been brought before the Lord this morning, let us stand and join in singing the doxology. God, we come before you in this time of worship. We journey with your son through the victory of Palm Sunday, through the passion of the cross. As we spend time in this moment of worship, hearing your word 
and sitting with the understanding that we have of the sacrifice that Jesus has made for our sin. We bring before you the sacrifice of our gifts. Gifts of time, talent, resources. Gifts still in the hearts and the lives of the giver. Gifts in the offering plate. Especially the gifts that are designated for our local food bank. We place them in your hands. That you may bless them, multiply them, and send them out into the world that through us, others may know you as King of Kings, Lord of Lords. We also take this time to lift before you our concerns and share with you our joys. We do celebrate you, celebrate with you that Ross's brother is here, thankful for a safe journey as they get to spend time together. We're thankful that Barb's family has made it safely to Florida, and we continue to lift them before you that their journey, that their vacation may be a fruitful and restful time, and that their journey back may be safe. We lift before you in praise that Eric's surgery went well, but we recognize that there is a lot of rehab and a lot of work to do ahead of, of following this surgery, and so we place him in your hands. We lift before you the many egg hunts going on this weekend, but specifically our own. Not only that the children will come and have fun and that the parents may enjoy this time with their children here at the church, but also that your word may be proclaimed through all that we do. We also lift before you Pleasant Valerie Lutheran as they attempt to get back in the swing of things, Lord, the, the tradition of their egg hunt. And we pray that the same may also be for them, that others might come, might flock to their egg hunt, that they may be blessed by the presence of many families, and that through them your glory may be known. We lift before you Joyce, as they go for their procedure tomorrow, you know the circumstance the best, you know each particular situation, and you know what it is that is needed in this circumstance. We place Joyce in your hands. Lord, you, from our very first moment that you created us in the Garden of Eden, we were given to be protectors and caretakers of the land and of the animals. And so often, not only in society, but even in God-fearing communities, we see those who treat animals like a commodity, like an object be traded and sold and done with as is pleased. And while we recognize that you have given us some animals for the care and upkeep of our bodies, there are many animals that we have also accepted as companions. And to see them abused and treated poorly just to provide us with entertainment or a comforting presence truly is an abomination to your creation. We place into your hands all of those who abuse animals, all of those who treat them poorly just to breed them for your justice. That you may make sure they get the punishment they deserve for the despicable acts that they commit on animals. Lord, we know that it's one of those circumstances where you're not in the business of smiting, as we might hope occurred in the Old Testament, but we know that you see each and every circumstance, and that as we help to bring to light those who harm our world and 
the animals and the creatures that live in it, that you will help bring to justice those who cannot cry out for themselves. Gracious Father, we come before you recognizing we are flawed humans. But the same voices that called out Hosanna were in the rabble at the end of the week as others yelled, crucify him. We ask that this journey through Passion Week, through this Holy Week, may be a reminder of the times that we have drifted away, that we have failed to care for you through the lost and the least. As we find ourselves in this week, not just literally finding ourselves in the space, but as we find examples of ourselves in this holy week. May we spend this last week of Lent, Lord, in a space of penitence and remembrance for all of the times where we have treated you as others have treated you in this story, in the past, and inevitably into the future. Help us also to find your presence, your love, even in the midst of this week. As we acknowledge the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear now these words from the chapters of Luke, chapters 22 and 23. Hear them with fresh ears. Hear them and maybe put yourself in the story. When the time came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles joined him. He said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I tell you, I won't eat it until it is fulfilled in God's kingdom. After taking a cup and giving thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. I tell you that from now on I won't drink from the fruit of the vine until God's kingdom has come. After taking the bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the meal and said, This cup is the new covenant by my blood, which is poured out for you. symbol of the fruit of the vine and a symbol of the covenant of Christ. But look, my betrayer is with me. His hand is on this table. The human one goes just as it has been determined. But how terrible it is for the person who betrays him. They began to argue among themselves about which of them it could possibly be who would do this. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, look, Satan has asserted the right to sift you all like wheat. However, I have prayed for you that your faith won't fail. When you have returned, strengthen your brothers and sisters. Peter responded, Lord, I'm ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. Jesus replied, I tell you, Peter, the rooster won't crow today before you have denied three times that you know me. Jesus said to them, I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in relation to me. And he was counted among criminals. Indeed, what's written about me is nearing completion. Jesus left and made his way to the Mount of Olives, as was his custom, and the disciples followed him. 
When he arrived, he said to them, Pray that you won't give in to temptation. He withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed. He said, Father, if it is your will, take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not my will, but your will must be done. Then a heavenly angel appeared to him and strengthened him. He was in anguish and prayed even more earnestly. His sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he got up from praying, he went to his disciples. He found them asleep, overcome by grief. He said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray so that you won't give in to temptation. While Jesus was still speaking, a crowd appeared. And the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said, Judas, did you betray the human one with a kiss? When those around him recognized what was about to happen, they said, Lord, should we fight with our swords? One of them struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. Jesus replied, no, stop, no more of this. He touched the slave's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers, the temple guard, and the elders who had come to get him, have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a thief? Day after day I was with you in the temple, but you didn't arrest me. Uh, but this is your time when darkness rules. After they arrested Jesus, they led him away and brought him to the high priest's house. Peter followed from a distance. When they lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant woman saw him sitting in the firelight. She stared at him and said, This man was with him too. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I don't know him. A little while later, someone else saw him and said, You are one of them too. But Peter said, Ma'am, I am not. An hour or so later, someone else insisted. This man must have been with them because he's a Galilean too. Peter responded, ma'am, I do not know what you are talking about. At that very moment, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter, and Peter remembered the Lord's words. Before a rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and cried uncontrollably. The men who were holding Jesus in custody taunted him while they beat him. They blindfolded him and asked him repeatedly, prophesy, who hit you? Insulting him, they said many other horrible things against him. As morning came, the elders of the people both chief priests and legal experts came together and Jesus was brought before their council. They said, if you are the Christ, tell us. He answered, if I tell you, you won't believe. And if I ask you a question, you won't answer. But from now on, the human one will be seated on the right side of the power of God. They all said, are you God's son then? He replied, you say that I am. Then they said, why do we need further testimony? We've heard it from his own lips. The whole assembly got up and led Jesus to Pilate and began to accuse him. They said, we have found this man misleading our people, opposing the payment of taxes to Caesar and claiming that he is the Christ, a king. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, that's what you say. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, find no legal basis for action against this man. But they objected strenuously, saying, He agitates the people with his teaching throughout Judea, starting from Galilee all the way here. Hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was from Herod's district, Pilate sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. 
Herod was very glad to see Jesus, for he had heard about Jesus and wanted to see him for quite some time. He was hoping to see Jesus perform some sign. Herod questioned Jesus at length, but Jesus didn't respond to him. The chief priests and the legal experts were there, fiercely accusing Jesus. Herod and his soldiers treated Jesus with contempt. Herod mocked him by dressing Jesus in elegant clothes and then sent him back to Pilate. Pilate and Herod became friends with each other that day. Before this, they had been enemies. Then Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people. He said to them, You brought this man before me as one who was misleading the people. I have questioned him in your presence and found nothing in this man's conduct that provides a legal basis for the charges you have brought against him. Neither did Herod, because Herod returned him to us. He's done nothing that deserves death. Therefore, I'll have a whip and let him go. But with one voice they shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Pilate addressed them again because he wanted to release Jesus. They kept shouting out, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time, Pilate said to them, Why? What wrong has he done? I found no legal basis for the death penalty in this case. Therefore, I will have him whipped, then let him go. But they were adamant, shouting their demand that Jesus be crucified. Their voices won out. Pilate issued his decision to grant their request. He released the one they asked for who had been thrown into prison because of a riot and murderer, but he handed Jesus over to their will. As we respond, let us turn to page 265 and sing verses 1 and 3 of There is a Fountain. turned to the women and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't cry for me. Rather, cry for yourselves and your children. The time will come when they will say, Happy are those who are unable to become pregnant, the wombs that never gave birth and the breasts that never nursed a child. And they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. If they do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? They also led two other criminals to be executed with Jesus. Please turn to page 228 and sing the first verse of Were You There? And then if you would keep your finger on that page because we will be coming back to that hymn. Mm -hmm.
they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. They drew lots as a way of dividing up his clothing. The people were standing around watching, but the leaders sneered at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he really is the Christ sent from God, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him. They came up to him, offering him sour wine and saying, if you really are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above his head was a notice of the formal charge against him. It read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging next to Jesus insulted him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. Responding, the other criminals spoke harshly to him. Don't you fear God, seeing that you've also been sentenced to die? We are rightly condemned, for we are receiving the appropriate sentence for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come to your kingdom. Jesus replied, I assure you that today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon. And darkness covered the whole earth until about three o'clock, while the sun stopped shining. Then the curtain in the sanctuary tore down the middle. Crying out in a loud voice, Jesus said, Father, into your hands I entrust my life. After he said this, he breathed for the last time. When the centurion saw what had happened, he praised God, saying, It's really true. This man was righteous. All the crowds who had come together to see this event returned to their homes, beating their chests after seeing what had happened. And everyone who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance observing these things. As we sing the second verse of Were You There, I will have a couple of people help me strip the altar of all of the decorations as we prepare to conclude this service. So please join in singing verse 2 of Were You There? was a man named Joseph who was a member of the council. He was a good and righteous man. He hadn't agreed with the plan and actions of the council. He was from the Jewish city of Arimathea and eagerly awaited God's kingdom. The man went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Taking it down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid it in a tomb carved out of the rock in which no one had ever been buried. It was the preparation day for the Sabbath, and the Sabbath was quickly approaching. 
approaching. Let's stand in joy in singing our final verse of Were You There? as we again continue to prepare for the bareness of the week ahead. Again and again, we find ourselves here at the foot of the cross, at the pit of despair, in the face of death. We began our service today by waving palm branches and shouting Hosanna. Now we are here sitting in the silence of death, with the light of Christ gone from the room. But take heart because God is here too. God walks with us through the loss. God holds us when we cannot hold ourselves. God gives us courage when we need it most. And God reminds us that death is never the end of the story. Easter Sunday is coming, friends. But we have to go through the cross to get to the empty tomb. Without the cross, there is no crown. Without suffering, there is no triumph. So for now, I invite you to embrace those feelings that come with the earthly loss of our people. 